Welcome back to the Beard Bros Podcast. Hope you guys are having a blessed day. I just want to remind you, if you haven't done already, go punch the like button and subscribe, please. On that note, we're going to introduce today's guest. It's a buddy of mine, Manny. What's going on, what's dude? Going, what's up, man? What's up, man? Chilling. How's your day going, brother? Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty busy, bro, but nice and chill, you know? Nice, nice and chill. Nice Tuesday. Yeah. Can't it's complain. Good on Tuesdays. Oh, it's about to go up on Tuesday after this. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm homies just fucking finish the last class. They want to get a little tipsy. I'm off tomorrow, so you damn. Know. So you know me. I'm, gonna, I'm probably turn up. Chill it tonight. That's what's up. That's what's, what's, up. Up. what's up. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. What uh, do you do? Bro, I'm a. I'm a. For a living, I'm a tow truck driver, bro. Okay. Me and my father own a business. And uh, so Monday through Friday, pretty much twenty four seven, bro. We're driving tow trucks. Uh, we pick up wrecks, uh, search warrants, whatever's needed. You know, people's cars broke down. We take them to body shops, whatever. Do all that. Uh, I make music. I'm a hip hop artist. Want to spit a bar? What's up? Want to spit a bar for us? Want to spit a bar? Yeah. Are you right. freestyle? I'm, I'm not. I'm not very good at freestyling, bro. Honestly, sure. but I'm, I'm more into like writing. You know, so. I have it written. Just been a while. Nah, nah, nah. Hold on. I want to. I mean, if you're down, I'm, I'm not doing it a bit. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's yeah. ease, let's ease into this a little bit. Hold on. Okay, so who's your? Uh, you said your dad and yourself own a, a towing company. Yeah. What's it called? Tom's Towing Service, bro. You guys need a towing company. Call these guys. I bet you they'll show you up. Know, somebody paying their bill. And if you ain't paying our car. <laughs> We're gonna send their ass. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna send the app for you, bro. Start paying on your bills. Yeah. Nah, uh, how long you been doing that? I've been towing with my boss, bro, since 2015. I worked in the oil field for about four years. Got laid off. Um, laid off for a year, and I worked with him full time starting then. But I've been around since 2004. Damn. And then I went back to the oil field for like a year and a half, and uh, I left that shit again. And then uh, I'm back on that full time now, and I'm just gonna stay there now. You know, I pretty much. Me and him run it, and we're just too good of a team, bro. We got too busy where I can't, I can't leave him at all, and I won't, you know? That's pretty I, much my business. I do want to ask, like, you say you go to accidents. Have you seen anything crazy? Or are you typically, like, the the cleanup crew? Like, it's like everything's yeah. already dispersed, and you're just picking up the whip. <clears throat> everything's pretty pretty much gone already. There's been a few times where we've gone to scenes where, you know, there's been like, bodies and stuff there. Oh, but, shit. like, they're covered up. You know, oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, most of the time, you know, it's we're just pretty much there to clean up the mess, the glass, and pretty much throw the freaking dirt or sand on the damn antifreeze or whatever, and get out of there. You know, as fast as we can, so traffic can open back up. Yeah, so. that is probably the most hectic thing. Is like being kind of in a rush because yeah. you know traffic does get backed up, and you're like, fuck. I, Kind of got to hurry. You don't want to miss oil and get somebody slipping at another accident right there. But that's but true. Yeah, yeah. see, so you leave antifreeze there, and then somebody she could be held liable for it. You oh, know? really? So you got to make sure everything. So. And you guys, I'm assuming it's like 24 seven, right? Yeah. You call in the middle of the night. You got to get up and go. You know. Fuck. That's yeah. got to be tough sometimes. It's like an ambulance, basically, bro. Yeah. Kinda. Basically. Yeah, yeah, we're on call with the sheriff's department, RPD, and state police. With sheriff's department, it's every other week. Oh, okay. So uh, this week we're on call, so next week we'll be. And so I'm assuming someone else is yeah. filling in the role while yeah. you're off for that week? Yeah, it's us and Rudy's. Oh, uh, okay. For sure, it's apartment. And then with the RPD, it's five different time companies, so every fifth week we're on call with them. Oh, shit. Yeah, so, uh, Damn, there's that many in town? Yeah. Damn, yeah. I would not have expected that. I felt like maybe three or four. Maybe yeah. three. Maybe three. Yeah, yeah. I thought like, I didn't think that was that many. I yeah. think all together like six or seven. Damn. So... Yeah, it gets, it's pretty hairy with the towing competition, you know, so, but, um... Can they be beefing like that? No, I don't think they're beefing, you know, like, yeah. like, we both go to a red kind of piece on that, we're, we're always, you know, helping each other out, so that's the cool part about it, you know? Okay, so how does that work? It, like, typically, wouldn't they just call one? Yeah, most of the time they do, but, like, with, uh, like, with state police, they don't rotate weeks, they rotate calls. Oh, okay. And so, like, if there's two cars, they'll call us, and then they'll call the next person on the list. Oh, okay. And we'll meet up out there, and if it's like a big nasty rig, we're sitting there both cleaning up. Fuck. You know, and it's like a brotherhood when it comes to that, you know? Well, at least that's good, though. At least you guys aren't like, fuck you, we're here first. Yeah. Like, that, what about Rico's? I know that. 
You know, we used to do repos, bro, but honestly, it's not worth it no more. Uh, the people are too crazy here, bro. And people are you know, crazy. Over a damn I'm car, you know? I, I mean, I can kind of understand, like, if you're just, like, pull up at wherever, my house or whatever. Like, what are the rules there? Like, what could you not do and what can you do? I don't know if you can carry your gun, bro, to protect yourself or not like that. Oh, really? You know? yeah. So, like, let's say, is there anywhere you can't go to pick up a car? Why is this, like, not I don't think you can like, go into somebody's, like, gate, private property. Okay, but like, you could, like, pull up in, like, say my driveway. My car yeah. sitting right there in the driveway. You pull up and just dip. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to inform me, right? You could just dip, no, right? What, what you would do is you would call the cops and be like, you call like dispatch and be like, hey, we're going to on the car here in case they call you report stolen. Just this yeah. is what's going on. What so. That's the least you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> that would be crazy. You just watch it and then these fools fucking whips getting towed off. I bet you it's easy in big cities because it's like you just fucking boom gone. There's so much busyness going on here. Dog. Yeah. Everybody's always home or somewhere. You know what I mean? Everybody's just paying attention. That it's is like, true. Coming out with shotguns and shit. But you're reason. right. It's gotta be crazy and not worth it. Yeah. Like, especially if you can't carry like, a weapon to protect yourself. Come on. Yeah, like, it's not. Where we're at, you know. Like, dang. So there you go. If you're not paying, I guess you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> from them. You know, from them. Coming from you're not worried about me. Yeah. <laughs> He's not coming at you. Got, Someone's gonna get you. I, I'm gonna kill him your car. Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. So let's jump to your basically second job. Your or is it your first job? What would you prefer? That was my second job. It, honestly, it's, it's it's a hobby. I make cash off of it, you know, because I stream worldwide and all that. Okay. But honestly, it's it's fun to me, bro. You know, and there's some days where, you know, I see the way hip hop actually is and I don't want to do it no more. Just because What you know, do you mean by that? By that like I don't know, I, I feel like a lot of music these days is a gimmick. Okay. Like, like a lot of people just take it as a joke. And I don't know, I see rappers like Lil Pump and everything, they don't take nothing serious, they have no content. Like when are you gonna hear like Lil Pump tell a story about his life? Or something like that. And like some of the music they make is cool to like vibe out to and just like jam out and shit like that, but like I like music with content, bro, you know? Like you listen to J. Cole, you just hear some of that shit do shit and you're like, wow. You know, yeah, you hear some yeah. of Meek shit and you're like, wow, Meek's one of my favorite rappers ever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Too fun. Like ridiculous, bro. Like you you wanna hear that and you wanna feel it. Like I like some of this stuff, like like Six Nine made some cool like bangers, yeah, bangers but they're bro, just like, they're not going to be left. That That's hard. what we were talking <laughs> that about hard, not though. that long ago. Is <laughs> yeah, just, they're that bangers, but is that the music you're going to remember and bump 20 years down the road? Yeah. Is it timeless? No. Yeah. Exactly. It's and that's, not like the early 2000 music where it's like well, I mean, there's still, there. there's still oh, songs like, like today Mario, that, that crazy. <clears throat> I'm sure people are going to like. I'm a Drake fan. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to some Drake yeah. later on in 20 years. Like, I feel like, yeah, there's certain rappers that could probably be like that. Like, J. Cole, that's yeah. someone like you said. Yeah. I will listen to him probably 20 years down the road. I probably yeah. listen but, to some little pump. It's pretty sick. I fuck with it. It's cool just to. I don't. I don't I, like the beat, the, the beat. Honestly. I, like I like you beats. said, I don't take these, like, these, like, I want to call them all up and comings, like these almost one hitter quitters. Yeah. Like, like you mentioned Fetty Wap recently, like in a yeah. video, or we were talking. Yeah, those songs were cool, but they were literally for the moment, and I've not heard anything yeah. really from the guy. Yeah, like, I don't even know if he has two eyes still, <laughs> or well, the one eye. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, say bro. though, like it's real shit. Like when that's true, and I don't mean disrespect because I know like these rappers that have been passing away are somebody's son. Yeah. But other than like Mac Miller, like I think he's somewhat legendary. Like he, he, I don't think so. This was crazy. I think he was good, yeah. but I don't think he was like it's that better, that top bad. tier. Yeah, I've, I've been following Nipsey since '08, bro. Crazy. That dude, so I mean, he means something to every. Like, just for instance, that dude Juice World meant something to everybody differently than myself. That's true. Yeah. You know, you but see, go for it. Honestly, I can't feel bad for that guy, bro. Did you see what like what happened? I just. I'm, I think he was mixing Molly's with uh, he, Lean. He popped Percocets to hide him from the cops. The cops, yeah. Oh, and that's how he died. He took like so many of them. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Wow. He swallowed a bunch of pills out of the cops because they were going to raid the plane or whatever. Because it was a, it was a private jet. So. See, and that's what I don't understand is... The whole story's kind of crazy. 
Is there more to it? Do you know yeah, the whole story? The, 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 the pilot, he called before they landed that they had like so many guns and weed. And so that's why he was putting them in his mouth <laughs> and swallow them because it was obviously it was already all kinds of shit. So, so, yeah. so basically, he had a bunch of shit already, already and he took what the, he could, mm-hmm. yeah. which made no difference because he was already going to get in trouble. Nah, he was probably getting in big trouble. Like, that's why he probably just did to just kill himself, low key. So, yeah. suicide. Because, dog, that was. I'm just saying, it sounds like a conspiracy. The, the, way, the way it looked like, it was. The way that the, the, I read the article, it kind of looked like he was like, fuck it, I'm not going to go to jail. I'm a suburban kid. I'm not. <laughs> right. I, you know what I mean? So it's like. So it was. Wow. That's kind of how it looked. So I don't really feel like, I don't feel really bad for him. Like, kind of like, he already. Just, it's like 6 9 too. Like, I don't feel bad for the guy when you put yourself in those shoes. Nobody says you have to do these, uh, like the the whole Gangster rap bullshit. Gangster shit, yeah, basically. Like, Mac Miller, he didn't do the gangster shit, but he was fucking popping. He was, mm-hmm. he was like a legend, so. Yeah. Do that shit, Wiz, he don't do no gangster shit. He was a dope as fuck. Yeah, Wiz Khalifa is dope. See, that's someone else that I can respect and say, yeah, probably 20 years from now, I could listen but to like some Wiz. Said, people don't have content, enough, enough fucking content in their raps. They have to find a different way, like, oh, I'm a... Be depre- the depressed rapper, or I'm gonna be the gangster rapper, like six times. So you kind of have to kind of find the different lines. You glorify the drug use, like the pop pills, and this. I can't, I can't, I can't love that, bro. You know, no, it's just well, weird. not whenever they're young and they're influencing the young. The young yeah. That's not a good. Like I get you're, you're doing you, and you're making whatever amount of money. Sounds cool, looks cool, but at the end of the day, you don't know who you're influencing. In the perspective of like children, yeah, like the broader. Because I remember when I was growing up, I was listening to Eminem and shit, and Eminem was like a depressed mm-hmm. addict at that too. So if you were that kid to take him wrong, like you could end up like him. If and they have some literal influence. Though, yeah, he would yeah. yeah. like little pump, like he's cool and all, but he's like, isn't he tatted on his face and shit? Yeah, it'll keep you. Like it's long. just like. I would hate for my kid to come out of high school when he's 18 listening to Little Pump these days saying, hey, I'm going to go get face tats. Like, not Fuck anything against that, them, bro. but it's like, come yeah. on, dude, you're 18. You're, you don't know what you're going to need to look like here in 10 years for a job or something. Like, you're not guaranteed yeah. to be a rapper. No, they ain't guaranteed. No one's guaranteed anything. The, the way you see the world at that age, which is crazy, the way you see the world at that age compared to the way we see it now mm. is an entirely different. Yeah, because if I got tattoos when I was 18, 16, 17, I'd probably have YOLO tatted on me, big as fuck. I I love boobies on my wrist. You know what I mean? Like, that shit was popping back then, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. I waited until I was like 21 and when I had like a different mindset of just what I really wanted to do. No, I I agree. So, So basically, you're not on that type of wave. How would you describe yourself as a hip hop, hip hop artist? I, I like to talk about, <clears throat> I like to talk about the realness, bro, you know, like, when I first started, honestly, I started, me and Steven Chris and I had a $20 mic that I got for Christmas. Okay. And we would just record and like, not even edit and just throw the shit on MySpace, you know, it's like oh, yeah. shitty as hell, you know. We, we our flows are horrible as hell, you know. But we throw out. Do you there. have any of those? Uh, still? Bro, I'm probably one of my old towers, bro. I'll show you. I'll show you that. Bro. <laughs> those would be cool archives. Just hey, to go I gotta through. show you Carmel by Steven, bro. Sorry, bro. <laughs> but I'll show you this shit, bro. That's just. I can only imagine, bro. But uh, you know, we started that with the twenty dollar mic, and he honestly freestyled a whole mixtape, bro. Damn. You know, we, we thought we put that out. And we thought we were, we made it, you know. Right. We just off that, you know, and. Over time, bro, the you know, uh, I kind of I kind of quit making music for about four or five years, and okay. um, about 2014, 15, I started getting feelers back into it, and uh, in between that, I was promote music for like upcoming hip hop artists in the West Coast. One of them, his name was uh, Steven Scipio. He used to go by XO. He was signed to Game back in the day. Oh shit! And uh, I promoted him all the way from 2010, actually, and uh, Richie Evans. Uh, who's on my uh, a couple of my albums already? Um, I promoted him a few times, and that's I just you, you know I was just networking people, and I would, at the same time I perfect my craft. I always write, you know, and everything, but I would never record. I never really had the itch to. But um, 
<clears throat> one day it just, it just crept on me again and I bought all my own equipment and I started recording again, bro, in like 2015. And I started sending my music out just to see what I could come up with, you know, because I knew these people. And I ended up with the feature from him. No shit. Yeah, City Lights. It, it, it debuted here in Roswell. It debuted in LA. It's it's my top streaming song, like, oh. the top I have. Dang. It's pretty, pretty cool, man. And, you know, and I listen to it now. Because I was in 2015. I listened to it in 2016. I listen to it now. And I feel like I rap like so much better now. And I'm like, man, really? I could have I I took it to game we just, like, verse-wise, you know, like, back and forth on that. Uh-huh. And... But that that was cool, man. Just to have like come back like that, and ever since then, I've been I've been hungry, and hungry, and hungry. But like I said, sometimes I think about it now, and I'm like, man, do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? And then, just the other day, uh, Spotify sends a uh, year end wrap up. I know you guys probably seen it all over yeah. Instagram and all that for all these artists. <clears throat> last year they sent one too, and I guess I had been listened to by 26 different countries last year. Damn, you know? bro. So that was that was like a big for me, and it, it inspired me to do another album. And then the one that came out the other day, I'm at 35. Oh, uh, no out With no new album or nothing, so they're just streaming old shit, you know? Dang. And so that, that just has me, like, that, poof, up here again, you It's that little boost that you yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the fire is lit again, you know? So. It may be, like, a, a storyteller. I know you are going back a little bit, but. Oh, uh, it's, just, it's just my favorite type of music, bro. You know, like, like I grew up, bro, my sisters, they always listen to Tupac. Okay. You know, and. That, that dude would tell stories like, like Brand's Got a Baby was fucking like classic, you know? And it's, you listen to music and just the shit that guy says, you know? Okay. And as I got older, to me, 50 Cent is one of the best songwriters of all time, mm -hmm. you know? And so that was that's honestly probably my favorite rapper of all time right there. And then what he brought to the table and then he brought along with himself was a Lloyd Banks, Game, and Young Buck, and all those guys, and all those guys had the crazy talent. Numerous classics, you know? Yeah. And I always listen to people like, like I think Rick Ross is very underrated. Rick Ross is one of my favorites. Yeah, Rick Ross is under. He doesn't put out as much as he once was, but still, when you just know his voice, you know his yeah. raps. Like, yeah, that boy. Yeah, Rick Jeezy. Ross. Yeah, I would say that. Jeezy, and like as I grew older, I like Gucci Mane more now. Yeah, like, Gucci Mane's foreigner. I like, like Gucci. I like his old shit. I like his old shit. Yeah, too. Like, like, I like, I like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I liked it because it is like his. It, he sounded like he had mucus in his nose, and it just sounded like crazy on a beat. It's just like, yeah, that's just fire. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like Fabulous. I like Fabulous. Yeah. Just dropped an album that I was listening to. That dude kills features like crazy. Uh, French yeah. Montana's album is like super clean, and like he's super underrated rapper. He's really on that, on that note, do y'all know what ended up happening with that fool? Montana? Yeah, like uh, did yeah. he get sick and he was in the hospital? Yeah, he for almost died. Yeah, he what happened? Died. He had he what? He was in ICU or something. Yeah, he had uh, surgery on something. Like he was like literally about to die, and then the next week he dropped an album. Fuck. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that one was already done. Right. right. And then he just dropped it. After right. That. You see, I really found out he dropped an album yesterday. Yeah. yeah the sales right. came out or something like that. I was like, that what? shit is fire. That shit's fire. Mm -hmm. Is it? I like French Montana. Though. I like French too. I like his hooks and all that. I haven't really like paid attention, zoomed into like one of his albums, but I like his hooks and shit. Who like, inspires you? Me? Yeah. Like, bro, music-wise, right now, big time is Meek in game. But Meek, listening to Meek's music is, that dude, honestly, is, that dude's a legend. Wow. And, like, as I got older, a person, another person who inspired me was Jay-Z. Jay-Z, um, who else? I like Bishop Lamont a lot. I don't know if you ever heard Bishop oh, Lamont. He was Sunday Aftermath back in the day. Um, growing up, Young Buck. Yeah, Lloyd good. Banks, bro. Lloyd Banks has like, Lloyd Banks is my sticks. one of my favorite rappers too. I like that Tony Ayo more than I like Banks, but that, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Tony Ayo is fire. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, he has some dope shit. I think I think Banks is probably one of the most underrated rappers. Yeah. Ever. What yeah. happened to him? He still makes some bangers still. Yeah, like, he, he had kids and he just really don't do much, you know. Yeah, he's, he's he's still doing a little bit. Like so so many people are chilling. Like I'm assuming you probably heard the Nick Cannon shit that came out. <laughs> oh, yesterday. I heard it yesterday. Yeah. It's garbage. Mm -hmm. That well, fool is garbage. He he put two gorillas on there though. He put Hitman yeah. Hollow and uh, Arsenal on there. It was pretty. Those two went in, but yeah, I, I, I guess know. it's funny because Eminem hasn't said anything, and I'm kind of like. Well, wasn't you, it? You were playing on Twitter, didn't you? Yeah, I was like, didn't he? He kind of started it, didn't he? Like, I don't know. I, I, I seen like a, yeah. I didn't read the whole article. But like, <coughs> he like said something on Fat Joe's album. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, is that yeah. what it was? Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> like, 
like when you mention Meek Mills, I I give that guy so much respect because again, I'm a Drake fan. So it's like liking like the Lakers and hating the Celtics. It just goes hand in hand. So whenever mm-hmm. Drake and Meek were having their beef, originally I was like, oh fucking Meek's dead. Like he it seemed like he lost the the battle or whatever. But in the end, I think he won the war because. He came out of that, man, after everything, after his jail and everything, bro. He just has prevailed. He's yeah. he's skyrocketed. His music's always trending. He's putting shit out. Like, you got you to gotta think who he's hanging out with, too, now. He's hanging out with Robert Kraft, the owner for the, the 76ers. He's not hanging out with these gang members no more. He's well, that's what I'm saying. Is, it, really it, 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 he took off. Shit. Like, yeah, Drake got some clout from it, but Drake really didn't need yeah, anything. Need yeah. But Meek... It's not like he wasn't up there, but man, that put him over the top. Like he is good now. That's like and that's like the the saying. Any publicity is good publicity. Like bad publicity. Like yeah, yeah fucking sharp, skyrocketed. I mean, he might have been this high archy, but now he's top tier, top five rapper in the game. Yeah, right now. he's definitely up there, and that's what I gotta respect because most people getting knocked down like that and and being in the limelight. And people like he lost Nicki Minaj and went to jail and all this shit started trickling. It just looked bad. But man, the dude was able to pick himself up, dust himself off, and like manage something that not very many people can do. Yeah. And that's something you can only respect is like nothing kept that dude down. When all things look bad, that guy just said, I don't give a fuck what my odds are. I'm going to make this pop. And like you said, top five artists of, of the time right now. Right. Yeah. He's probably, yeah. Him and Drake probably right there, too. One or two. Because mm-hmm. Cole has gone <clears> right there. <throat> but like, the only reason I got him tatted on me is because uh, he dropped a documentary on Prime, whatever, Amazon Prime. Free me, Yeah, Yeah, that I watched that, and that shit just, just fucking made me feel like some type of way, bro. It was like... It was kind of like it wasn't like it, my my situation so similar to his, but it was like it was kind of like a small glimpse. Like of, you could take something. Yeah, from so it's just like this is a little small, like a black judge judging a a black individual. I had like a a, a situation like that. I got sent to jail for on some whack shit because of violation of some technicalities that that wasn't even me. So it was like he got popping a willy. And he went to jail for this many years, and I was like, I got a little glimpse of that. Imagine being, being six years in jail for popping a wheelie. It's like, damn, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So that little portion just kind of like, and that documentary is crazy. It's fucking insane. He's, the cool thing about him too, bro, is he can make a, a song about his life and all that, and he can make a club banger, and he can make a trap jam, and he could, you know, that song for the chicks. And see, I think that's what it's like. We were talking the other day where <clears throat> you got like Lamar Jackson. We'll take him for instance. He can do it all. He's fast. Mm-hmm. He his agility, his cuts. He's got an arm. His vision, his precision, his accuracy. Everything's top notch. He's everything. Okay. I think that's what helps rappers, or not even rappers, but music artists when they can be diverse in everything yeah. you can throw like a, a slow r&b or you can throw a rap or a hip-hop or like you said in the club or when you do it all you're the jack of all trades when it comes mm-hmm. to music people everybody wants you, mm-hmm. you know, look at the top five dudes like kendrick lamar he can make a, a soulful song he can make a banger he can make a woman song. i don't i mean he has cole, no limit j cole uh drake uh, Meek, and then I don't know who else you put up there, probably like the baby, but I mean, he's just trendy, that's probably why. Yeah, but, you right know, know. You know I mean? so it's just like those five are pretty kind of diverse. You know? So far, gone by Drake is one of the best cities ever. The most, oh, that whole, that whole freaking that, that, that album had everything, bro. I it was a mixtape, that. right? Dude. That mixtape had literally everything, dude. Else. That's the that was the album that put me on Drake, yeah. Like my buddy Martin. He was on Drake before that. He was like, oh, I fucking love this fucking dude. And I'm like, ah, Drake from Degrassi is fucking <laughs> handicap fucker. Like, he's, a, he's a fucking... Uh, it's funny because Degrassi was when y'all were like growing up. Yes. Like, and I was like, ah, this will get rap. And he, he, I never really gave him a chance. And then I heard that album. I was like, this boy's fire. Like, this boy got it. And then I started listening to his older shit and then his newer shit. And then it was just like... You knew for a while, like Martin knew, he was like, he's going to be good. And 
he blew up. He's like they were talking. Were we talking about him being the new Spike Lee of the NBA yeah, now? Yeah, you know, like shit. Game, like anything he puts out is gold. Cool. Like yes, yeah. platinum. We'll say platinum. Anything he puts out is pretty even diamond, bro. Like that dude. That dude is is filthy. Yeah. He's like on Beyonce level, bro. It's like yeah. dude, he's up there with her, bro. It's like crazy. I'm like, fuck. It is crazy to see how. He hasn't been out for very long. Probably like ten years. Uh, oh, eight, was it was the 07 when he started really getting a buzz? Yeah, yeah it was about that time because I think I was like a sophomore, junior at the time. around that time. Yeah. yeah. Not, been for a long, bro. not long, but it seems that way. It's like Lil Wayne. He's probably been around for like 20 years. But, but like, see, he don't even put music out no more. No. I feel like he's retired. Like, he hasn't said anything, but he's... I am actually wonder with like him if like he owes a label some albums or something like that, and he's just throwing it out there to get his contracts up or something. Well, then, but then again, he got out of his contract with Cash Money, so that I don't know. that was a weird like series of events yeah. with the Young Money and the Cash Money and him and fucking Baby and fucking Young Thug was in the mix of all this mm-hmm. shit. And Barter 6 is the hardest shit. It, it was that. just a lot of... <laughs> it was a lot of... Young Thug's a beast, bro. Young Thug's a beast, bro. I feel like he's better now. Yeah, he's better now. Yeah, he's better now. I feel like he's better now. Like, with the shit he puts yeah, out more recently yeah. than he was at... Like, at the beginning, I kind of joked with him. I was just like, this fool, I can't even understand this motherfucker. I, I love Young Thug. But then... After he, like, cleaned his act up, like, it just seemed like he, he was able to, like, actually speak English. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, damn, I fuck with this fool. He's, he's, he's not bad. He's weird. I like the, I don't like the dresses. Yeah, like, he's a little shit. strange. But, I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's what builds your, like, your persona towards yeah. people. Like, to people, like, yeah, it's weird, but shit, grab people's attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you can be unique in however way you want to be and... People like it. It's like that's what brings, I think, the the clout, the the spotlight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you you mentioned I could have sworn you said albums. How many albums you got? This is my third one, bro. Third yeah. album, huh? Dang, mm-hmm. man. How many? Well, let's say what was the name of your first two, and how many songs did you put on each album? My first album was called The Axis, bro. This is like the the world. Revolves around the axis, you know. Okay. And uh, that was a thirteen song, three rumor skits. So okay. that was like ten songs, really. And the second one was Position of Power. And uh, that was just sixteen songs straight up, you know. And both those got pretty good streaming numbers. I sold about the first one. I sold about about sixteen hundred copies of it. And I'm independent, so they sell for nine ninety nine, you know, like on iTunes and all that. And I get nine oh nine of it. Okay. And so I made good money back. It costs literally thousands of dollars to make these albums. Honestly, people don't understand. You know, you got to pay for production, to get yourself mixed, videos, everything. Oh, shit. And so you put it in to get it back, you know? Right. And uh, <clears throat> second album did about almost 2,000. Damn. You know? And so, and this next one is called Lord Have Mercy, bro. And uh, honestly, it's mostly me, you know? And, uh, I got Richie Evans on there, the guy who I used to promote. He honestly used to be signed again back in the day. His name used to be Juice. Okay. And uh, he's going to announce pretty soon, I think probably like tomorrow, he's signing the Hurry Across and Maybach Music. Dang, bro. So, yeah, so I've been around him probably since I was like 16 and I've actually known him, you know? Okay. And so anytime I need something, he's, you know, he's there. I got his number, we text, and he sends it back within like a week, you know? Damn. He's, just a, he's just a cool dude, a cool all-around dude from Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, he's actually on the album twice. He's actually on the first single I released already for it called Wise Guys. Okay. And it's just pretty much just, just uh, three verses on it, no hook or nothing. You know, over like an uh, old mob beat. That's pretty dope, you know? Nice. And that's actually on iTunes and everything right now. So okay. that's like a little promotional single. And uh, he's on another one called Paranoid, bro. And we recorded Paranoid in about two weeks after Nip, Nip got killed. And Nick was uh, one of his good friends. They have videos on YouTube of them recording together in the studio and all that, you know. Damn. So they've been around. So Nick's been on his projects. He's been on Nick's projects. And, and uh, his verse on Paranoid is about the whole situation. You know, and it's, it's cool, man. But other than that, I got, a, I got another artist from here on it. His name is Kratos. Uh, my brother, my boy, my boy Drew, my Drew, he's a, he's, a, he's a talented dude, bro, from here. 
and uh, I got a couple R&B singers, but other than that, it's just it's just really me, you know. And uh, this one's honestly a more personal type deal to me. The first one I was mostly bangers, you know, and I had like a real personal song or two on there. Second one is just really mostly bangers, and I put a lot more songs on there. But this one's like crazy personal. And Dang. I got a lot of stuff on there, bro. That's gonna piss some people off, but I don't care, bro. It's the truth to me, you know. Okay. And like I said, I like the I like the where you have actually have like you put your heart in the shit, bro. When you put your heart in your music, that's the best music right there. And one thing I learned from studying like Dr. Dre and Eminem and all that, you know, watching these documentaries and everything, mm -hmm. is uh, if you want to make your music timeless, like we we're talking about, never mention a year, never mention the time, never mention like that. Like I got a 2008 so and so, and none of that shit, you know. That way, whenever you listen to it, say in 2040, you don't hear like 2008, none of these. Never mention a year like that. So I try to make my music as timeless as possible. You know, so that makes a lot of sense. I, I guess I would have never even thought of that concept. Yeah. I, I see. I, I study. I study. I'm a student of it, like just like football. You know, right? The NFL. I'm a big time student of the game. That's that's like my first love right there is football. Right. And so I study hip hop like I did football as a kid. You know, so damn man, that's I'm I'm. If you don't mind, I'll probably leave. The links, I'll, I'll go look for them and I'll, I'll leave the links in the description of this video yeah. of your first two albums. And then I'll, uh, by the end of it, remind me and we'll 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 see how you can uh, purchase your new album coming out here. Okay. But, uh, dude, that's crazy. Like, I don't want you to give me too much because obviously it's, it's not out yet. But <clears throat> you mentioned it's personal. Yeah. What drove you to make it personal and is there anything particular that you you needed to make like put that message out well bro honest to god this time a year a year and a half ago about a year and a half ago bro i was i wasn't doing well bro i was being i was being a bad a bad dude to my lady bro you know i, I wasn't doing well i was I was hanging out with some the wrong crowd and all that. You know, I was just being a bad person, bro. And I got caught up, and she stayed. You know, she stayed with me, and I promised change. I've changed so much, bro. I've changed myself so much to be a better person. Um, I was massively overweight, bro. I've lost seventy pounds since June. Congrats, brother. You know, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. You know, a lot, a lot of it, bro. I've had, I've had crazy family issues this past year. You know. Um, I have had I've had an uncle who who said I was like a son to him, literally turned his back on me and not speak a word to me for like a year and a half already. For for whatever reason something happened that where I wasn't even present, I had nothing to do with, you know. And all of a sudden that happens and I'm just I'm letting it out, bro. You know, if they don't like it, oh well. Damn. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is, bro. That, that that's that's the avenue where I can let it out <clears throat> and express myself, bro. Right. You know? So. No, I mean, I don't think there's a better way because the way you speak about how music is these days, it sounds like you're you're following it up with your own actions by putting it out there like that. Yeah. And frankly, obviously, I don't know the situation by any means, but I always think like speaking your piece allows you to move forward, even yeah. if those individuals or whoever doesn't move forward, yeah. you gotta move forward. Yeah, and see, see, I'm not like going like, F you, F this, no, 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 no I don't believe bro. I'm, I'm just telling either. my, you know, my stuff, you know? Like I said with my lady, bro, like she stayed, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my whole life, bro, just showing her, you know? And we're, we're gold right now, bro. That's, that's, that's gonna be my wife, so, you know? That's what's yeah. up, man, I, that's respect that, not a lot of people recognize that, dude. Yeah. Not a lot of people can sit there and say, you know what, I've been fucking up. Mm -hmm. Like, it's easy to go and say, oh, look at them. They're the ones doing whatever the fuck or whatever. But sometimes you just got to man up. Yep. And you just got to do what you got to do. And, and you got that, like you said, you got an avenue to speak your piece <clears throat> and move forward. And on top of that, your you're you're providing yourself with opportunities mm -hmm. like you got these guys that are working with other artists that possibly can help you someday mm -hmm. and shit man i mean shit if no one's done it i pat you on the back man yeah. like you said you fell off for four years or whatever not making music and now you've you followed back and yeah i mean 
by the numbers, it sounds like you're doing well, man. Yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. And like, like I said, honestly, it's it's tough to make it here in Rosal because a whole concert situation. But whenever I did came back, whenever I came back first is whenever Reverb Nation was growing, and there was like a, people were those like rappers, <clears throat> like thirty rappers on those charts trying to get to number one. And I remember I got up to number two on that chart, and I was following. I was trying so hard to catch up a rapper named Spirit Butcher. Okay. He's like the OG of rap around here. You know, that dude's talented. He's he rips shit up like crazy, bro. He, he just freestyles on top of his head, he listens to the beat, and he just goes off, comes and records his verse in five minutes, and he's gone. Don't even write nothing. Damn. You know, like, it's crazy. Awesome. But I chased him for so long, and I was like, fuck, how can I pass this dude? And he just has the, the crazy loyal fan base. And it got to the point, uh, before my second album, I don't think I remember my first album. My first, right before my first album, me and him teamed up, and now me and him, like our little independent label, is me and him and Kratos now. And so who I was chasing is the person who believed in me the most. And who's now overseeing everything that I'm doing. Damn, man. So. <clears throat> it's crazy how the circle of life works, brother. Yeah, bro. Like, it's, like, it's insane, bro. You don't know who you're going to meet, how you're going to link up, or what's going to be provided to you as opportunities. But shit brings itself to light. And then that's, it depends on what you do with it. Mm-hmm. Because you could have easily just ignored it all, or you could have been an enemy of that guy and said, oh, he's my competition. But yeah. now, rather than do so, you linked up together, and yeah. I can only imagine what you guys are going to produce yeah. in yeah. the future. Yeah. Little did I know he was watching the whole time, like, impressed, you know what I'm like? That shit was cool, and he told me, like, you know, I'm watching you and this and that, and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, that, that was cool. But it's like, what is yeah. it? Your fans will be quiet, but your enemies will say the loudest shit. Like you, yeah. you can be like your closest people, and they'd be loud as hell and tell you that you suck and all the comments are bad. But there's that one comment that's like good. It's like, oh yeah, that's who I go oh, for. Yeah, this one person in my exactly. head. Exactly. That's what I'm saying is, and maybe we don't say this enough, but man, I'll speak for myself, and he can take a turn afterwards. But I appreciate everybody that does watch. Yeah. Every single time. You watch, you click on the video, you like the video, you share the video, you comment on the video. You don't even have to like, watch, or any of those things that you come up to us or text us saying, good job. Like, I can't show my appreciation enough because even if it was just one person watching, I, I would tell this guy, hey, let's let's make content for that one person. You know, yeah. fuck it. If that's all we had, then that's all we had. Like, it's not about that. But we do appreciate it, and I'm sure you could say the same. Oh, yeah, bro. Like, like I said, like I, when I feel down on myself, and then I see something like 35 different countries jam me out this year, like, what the hell? Like, Damn, that's, that's just dope. cool. I can't even name 35 countries off the top of my head, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's just cool, you know? Yeah, dude. I, like, that's what's up, man. You know, that, that's just insane to me. Because yeah, the industry we're in, it's all about fans, man. Mm-hmm. You can be it the is. coolest person in the world, but you got no fans. What the fuck you gonna do, bro? It's like, fans are everything. And I've seen some of the most talented people in this world, like the most talented people, rappers, like anything, you know? But they have like a fucking cold, black ass heart, and they're just assholes. Mm-hmm. And nobody fucks with them because of it. Yeah, because those kind of people take it for granted. They yeah. they don't appreciate anything. They just it may talent wise, you can only get so far with natural talent. Mm-hmm. You yeah. gotta put in the work. You gotta grind. You have to go through the ups and downs and all the obstacles. Like nothing's made easy for anyone, but it's those that actually work hard and put it, put it together. In the long run, the longevity presents itself. Mm-hmm. Because anybody can shine really quick. It's like these young rappers. Yep. They get these one little bangers, and it's cool. They're, they're living in the, the spotlight for a while. Yep. But then they just fall off. Or the day got tomorrow. Kind yeah, of and that's why like you look at Drake and Kendrick and J. Cole. Those guys do it, and they're doing it on a consistent basis, man. One thing I do like really, really, really fucking respect about Drake is, uh, you know, I, I love Drake, I love his music, but like, a lot of his music is not for me. Like, whenever he did a Views, I just did not like that album. Oh, okay, I love that album. I didn't like that album. <laughs> yeah, my, my lady loves that album, and I give her so much shit about it, but she's like, anything Drake does is, you know. I mean, not everything Drake does, but, her, I, I mean, give her shit about it, you know. Sorry, he, the boy can't <laughs> do no wrong, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like... Like I said, like so far gone is my favorite deals ever. But one thing I I love about that dude 
is uh, I follow like like academics and stuff like that, you know, and then uh, like some of you like one of these young rappers will put out a hit, like even like one of these gimmick guys will put out a hit, and Drake will be in their DM and be like, bro, that shit's tight, like giving them props, like that shit's so cool, bro, like. Come on, that's like the coolest shit I ever, mean, bro. That'll make somebody's day go woof. That's what you I'm know? saying. That oh, would be like mean? Joe Rogan fucking hitting us up yeah. and saying, like, y'all are doing a good ass job. Yeah. Like that if he were to DM us, I'd be like Drake DMing you right now yeah. saying, Hey bro, fuck keep it up or yeah. whatever. Some small shit. Yeah, but bro. it could mean the world to somebody. I see a DM from Joe Rogan, I'm doing a backflip off your house. I'm like a broken neck. Drake hitting me up like climb a tree, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'll be awesome. <laughs> Get the let's do work then fuck all the DM up like hey you wanna come on? Like yeah. hey, we got a Friday open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'd figure something out because that's I tell this fucker all the time. Like anytime you meet someone, it's funny. That's the first thing I'm like, hey, my host podcast. <laughs> because that's all I want, man, is I want everybody. Like yeah. I think the population in Roswell is like 57, 58,000. Yeah. We've only done 44 people. Yeah. Like, that means we still have pretty much 58,000 yeah. people. <laughs> and it's going to be it's it's probably more, bro. Yeah, it's, it's like, like more. Yeah, it's so you many know? people. And it's like, I want every single one of them to yeah. come on. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's where I'm at, man. And yeah. I think you getting that fire lit again. It's just going to bring more and more from you, dude. Yeah. Where do you record? My house, bro. I'm on little You got your own shit going? Yeah, I, I bought everything myself. I got my own. My, my, actually, my lady got me a nice MacBook for Christmas last year, bro. Oh, no. It makes life so much easier because that thing runs. So, phew. Sports my dreams, bro. That, that's wife right there. I'm telling you, bro. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. That's, that's a man that bro. appreciates. That's wife right there, bro. <laughs> hey, that's what's good. Yeah, and then Apple, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Like, if you're going with someone else, you're fucking up. Yeah, don't fuck up. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Yeah. No Android phone. No fucking computer. Unless you, unless you just know computers like that and you build like your own computer and you're just like a fucking... That's different. Yeah, yeah I guess like, you're right. It's just like, but, you know, if you're just going to buy one to just set up ready, it's Mac. You gotta go Mac. But Mac's like got it all Mac's already. Mac's a G. Like, yeah, you got it. Like, you got it all and Apple's there's not much you got to do with it. Go, Apple's yeah. Awesome. yeah. So you record at home. Yeah. Um, I want to ask, like, typically, where do you, like, are you sitting on the toilet? Are you at work? <laughs> what, what, oh, where have you got, like, your, your best shit from? Like, where were you? What'd you do? Where, <clears throat> did it just dawn on you? You started riding at work, middle of towing a truck out of the middle of Main Street? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just asked. I'm like, like cleaning up some fucking <laughs> glass, bro. And fuck, that's dope. <laughs> no, bro, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm curious. People, <laughs> that's a good fucking question, bro. You're gonna love this answer. Honest to God, bro. Honest to God, like whenever I like, I'm gonna do an album, whenever you know, do make me shape something like that. I think about it and I pick like the concept of beats I wanna have and shit like that. You know, I'll go East Coast or whatever. You know what I mean? And. uh Whenever I, my best ideas for music and like my first, like a verse go through my head is when I'm in the shower. In your shower? When I'm in the shower, bro. No shit. Like everybody talks about singing in the shower, bro. Like my mind just rolls up in the shower. I'll be in there for like an hour just like, fuck. Just keep coming out of the shower writing a fucking verse on my phone and shit like that. You know what I mean? Nice. Like, that's, that's, it's weird, but that's just what it no, is. No, I, my mind rolls. Yeah. I'm in the shower, my mind just goes. Do you have any like, uh. Before you get in the booth, like any remedies or like what are they called? Like a uh, uh, water, bro. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's it. Water. Water. Mm-hmm. Hey, you gotta keep them vocals yeah. like lubricated. I need to start doing that yeah. for the podcast. Yeah, because yeah, once you start spitting, like, are you like pretty consistent with like? Because I know. <clears throat> I don't know how true it is. I would like to believe that. Like, Lil Wayne, they say he just goes in, spits, freestyles. When he'd stop, like, he usually, I think the way they said it was, once he gets to a point he doesn't like something, he'll tell them, hey, go back to this part, and then he starts over and starts rapping again. But it's completely freestyle off the top of his dome. Mm. I don't know how much all that's true, but are you, you said you write. Is there ever a moment that you're like, hold up? This might sound better and you mm-hmm. backtrack. Oh yeah, bro. Whenever I like I spit something and I don't like it, I'll stop and then I'll go in there and 
<clears throat> even if it takes me like 20 minutes, just like rewrite something that sounds better. Uh -huh. Rewrite it, then I'll go re-record the little deal. You know, and I've done that plenty of times, bro. Or like I'll even cut like a bar short, like a, take two, three words out of a bar, just so it'll sound better and flow better. Nice. What's I your take on uh, Ghost Riders? Anyone I'm good at writing. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost Riders? This is hip hop. If you didn't write it, don't record it. That's hey, that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if you got a ghost or like Dre or something like that, he gets a pass, bro. Because that, <laughs> that dude, that dude, that, that dude makes the beats right. and he mixes everything and all that, you know. So someone like Dre or Kanye, they get they get a pass. They get the pass. But if, if they don't like make the beat or like that, they just living off somebody else's writing. Come on now. So like Cube came up and he's like, "Hey, bro, I got a verse for a fire Mexican like artist. Would you rap it?" Like Ice Cube's like, "I need a Mexican artist. I don't know anybody real that can spit it like you." And it's like, "Would you would you let him write a verse for you?" Cube? Yeah, Ice Cube. Probably. Yeah, that'd be dope. Huh? Yeah, I was thinking the same That's thing. Cube, bro. You say no. Yeah, like you can't take like a legend like yeah. Cube. You gotta talk like. But somebody. it's like it's like a scenario. It's just like. I need a Mexican artist. It's like, like, you know, like you're in know, LA, dude. You know what I thought was like little Wayne kind of ghostwriting for someone was Nikki. Yeah. I felt like he was writing her flows. Is he gay? Because <laughs> he always says some gay ass. Like, she said like, some fucking. Yeah, yeah she said. Yeah, but like, <laughs> it, it, it just shit. sounded like Wayne, but like in the female version. I can see that. It was just like. That's like, it sounds like fucking Wayne wrote yeah. that, but Nick yeah. is singing or rapping it. Like the one on Roger, that definitely sounded like Wayne wrote that shit. For I'm her. just like, ah, uh, that's that suspicious, but I mean, she made it. She did Bob, She is Bob and her and Do you hear like early shit? She was like a beast, bro. Like, was she? She was like lyrical as hell when she first started. And then she went to Young Money and she became like like a Wayne, so that you might have some... You might be, you might be all, you might be all <laughs> I just think because that was somebody that I recognized back in the day. I was like, hmm, that's weird. Yeah. And they were working together and all kinds of shit, so it almost made sense. But other than that, I don't know who else would have really wrote for anybody. You think Cardi gets an offset to write her shit? No. A, I think she's stupid for taking that full back. She's like super open about him cheating. Did you see that shit with him? Low key, like, he was DMing dudes saying he like dick and shit. He got, supposedly got hacked. <laughs> You gotta read that shit. Oh, that shit was funny. Bro, I was dying when I seen that shit. Yeah, that shit I like funny. when, like, the girls beef. Like, with Cardi and Nikki and all these other bitches. Yeah. When the guys beef, like, I don't know. I, I'd expect it, like, to get cannon in the neck. Like, I don't know. I take it too far. Nick Is Nick there too far, though? I feel um, like there's not enough. That's true. Like, I feel like if you're gonna go in on someone, just fucking put it all out there. <clears throat> Like, fucking talk about their moms and shit. Like, fuck it. Yeah, yeah but look what it did to Ja Rule. He was the one person that actually died. Ja Rule. <laughs> he was the only one that I, died. You gotta give him props, though, because that dude, so he mentioned him's mom and fucking lady <laughs> and his kid, bro, was fire as fuck. Died, he but, did lowball him, but yeah. I mean... He said, still died. That was like his last breath. Yeah. That was his last breath. Yeah. That was his last breath. That fool still buys yeah. like all the tickets in the front row so it's just empty as fuck. Yeah. It's like this fool does shit to Ja Rule just to fuck him. <clears throat> I mean that's super fucking clowning. Because like, he's probably the biggest troll on the internet though. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, he's, he's hilarious like, bro. Emma, uh, what's his name? What uh, was Floyd? it? What was the one saying that 50 Cent had recently and they didn't like it? Does it get the strap? Yeah I get the strap. And then, like, we'll get the strap. And then, no, like, I have a shirt that my lady got that from. A shirt that says "Get the strap on it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he used to say that after everything, like yeah. after the meme or whatever. And then he'd be like, "Hey, go get the strap." Yeah. And then, like, people hated it. I think, yeah. like, it got to like legal issues and shit mm -hmm. to an extent, maybe. And I was That's like, "Fucking hilarious!" Get the strap. <laughs> yeah. Copyrighted, didn't he? Probably. I was watching Power, and I heard one of the dudes say that, and I was like, "Fucking greedy." Oh, oh, no, to this day, that's just as we roll when I see videos of uh, LeBron saying that. <laughs> nah, have you ever had any type of uh, beef with another artist? Not really, bro. No? Mm -hmm. Back in the day when we were kids, yeah, but not really, bro. Like, I'm cool with all those fuckers now, you know? Yeah. Nah, because I remember, like, uh, Anthony Cobo's fame mm -hmm. used to do a lot of music shit with, like, a buddy of mine with uh, Bobby Villanueva. Mm -hmm. They used to kind of get together. I don't know who else they used to fucking have on there. 
But uh, I'm not seeing him. Does he do music anymore? Honestly, I haven't seen nothing of him in a while. Last time I saw him, he was telling me he had beats and stuff like that, but we have a connection about it yet. You know, uh, so. Okay. Now, I, I, he was like one of the first people that kind of was like putting shit out there when we were younger. Mm. But I never really followed up with him. Like, I didn't really hear anything. He never did anything, it seemed like. You know. But, uh... It's kind of weird, bro. If you see my DMs, it's a lot of people that, like, send me their music. Well, back in, like, a couple of years ago, I used to be, like, random young guys always sending me their music from there, and I'm just like... Like their own music? Their own, like, their own SoundCloud or whatever, and they'll send it to me, and they're like, hey, take a look, bro. I'm like, I'll look at it, and I'll look at it, and some of them were pretty sick. I just, I don't know what to do with it. What do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry. See, because like, I'm not saying it. I was a rapper or whatever, but me, my buddy Martin... And my buddy Matt Branch, we used to freestyle, like mm. kind of put together our own shit. We'd blaze it, have some drinks, and fucking throw down on the mic. And I don't know, I thought I was pretty good. But the best was Branch. He could come up with your hook, and his freestyles were fucking. He was creative yeah. with himself, but I don't know, I thought it was a little bit of waste of talent. Like he didn't pursue it enough. Mm. And I think that goes into the the thing of like people have natural talents they just don't utilize it properly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's, there's a lot of people bro that have the whole talent in the world with this, especially in Roswell, and they just <clears throat> they don't put their they don't put any time into it. We don't know why. Not yeah. here judging nobody. They have stuff they don't like going on. But right. they don't. Do you know of those two dudes that sing the Christian rap? Which one? <clears throat> I don't know. They're like kind of popular <clears throat> here. <clears throat> they're like one, I think either they used to be bikers or they're not bikers anymore. I don't know. Did one wears cross? glasses. Yeah, well, they, they, they literally sing like Christian rap music. Like they're, they don't cuss. They speak of like they mention the Bible and stuff in there and all kinds of like. They just put a video out. I don't know how long ago. Like, was it with bikers and stuff like that? It was bikers. Yeah, one of them was Cross, bro. He used to make regular music. Actually, he was on my first album. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, he used to make regular music. You know, like regular hip hop music like that. Yeah, he used to be a fast paced rapper too. Like, yeah. he had like speed to it. it was pretty. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Now, now he became a Christian rapper for, like last year. Oh, okay. he's like he's a good buddy of mine. That's one dude that's always like supported the young act and everything. Really? And that's, that's one dude that's always been like really supportive of any new rapper coming from Russell. But he's like he's a Christian rapper now, bro, and that's it's cool to see, you know, because he still makes bangers. But you know, yeah, it is different. I've seen a few like uh, shared on uh, I think Facebook, mm -hmm. and I've checked them out. You know, and it's not it's not bad. It's just different. Yeah. and I'm a complete supporter. I'm like, hey, you, you're doing something that not many people are doing. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, I just thought about it. Uh, one of my homies from Cruces, his beat was on a. Uh, the WNBA, WNBA played one of his beats for like, like uh, you know, before a game they had like the song. Uh -huh. uh, one of the dude from Albuquerque, his name's Torch. That's his rapper name. Uh -huh. My homie made the beat for him. That song was on the WNBA, and I even think the Orlando Magic played it. Really? Uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty sick. I remember him telling him about it like a few months ago. I was like, that's crazy. He lives in Christmas now, but yeah, he had a song on the WNBA, WNBA in Orlando. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. There's just so much music everywhere. Because I remember back in the day, it was all Americanized. Mm -hmm. But now, I feel like it's global. Yeah, you it's get just, everything of everywhere. It's like basketball, bro. It's everywhere. A lot of hits are like Latin hits, bro. Like Spanish hits and everything. Mm -hmm. really, yeah. you, you sing like Spanish, Spanish at all? Nah, you speak bro. Spanish? No, 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 bro. I can understand a little bit, bro, but not really. Oh, no. okay, okay. I wish I did, bro. It's like, come on. I wish I fucking learned that shit. <laughs> Me too, shit. I, I mean, <clears throat> Bieber was on a track with like Bad Bunny I believe that was Drake it was Drake I don't yeah. know, one of those fuckers but that's what I mean he, yeah. he's a jack of all fucking trades man mm -hmm. he knows the trends and like he said Mexican Latino Latino they helped each other probably, probably yeah. I feel like Drake just helps everybody that's nobody, nobody, though, yeah though. like he nobody really he except knows. Canada <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, like, you, you throw yeah, Drake on something, yeah. I mean, true. Well, that's yeah. true shit. I mean, they're not doing bad. And I'm not I'm not a Drake fan. I don't really listen to Drake, but I can respect the person that actually... He is... I have to, like... I'm not comparing the two, but, like, of, the, of today's time, it's like he is, like, like the Michael Jackson of our era. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like having Jordan... <laughs> And then you have like LeBron. 
Like they're not the same, but the 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 when you look at them and how global they are, that's who they like. Michael Jackson was phenomenal. He dancing, singing, all that shit. Drake's on that level. Like he can he can act, he can sing, he can perform, and does all this shit. And that's yeah. kind of who I'd compare him to to today's era. I can agree with that, bro. Because look how long he's been on top. That's like, true. It's crazy how long that he's been on top, bro. Like, he, he swings and he don't miss, bro. You know, that he does not miss for shit. Mm-hmm. Throw some Unless it comes to Rihanna. <laughs> That's the only time, bro. That's the only miss he gets. I know. He, and he did on live TV, too. And she said, I would have cried, bro, but. Even, it, even views was not that great, but it did numbers. It was like, <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't do that album at all. But. Sorry. No, he, he definitely does it, man. That's So, I want to ask you this. Where do you think, like, music's going? Where do you see music in, I don't know, like 20 years from now? I have no clue. That's, no. that's like, <clears throat> I don't know. Look at, look at what was 20 years ago. What was 20 years ago? What was it like? 20 now, years ago, it was like CDs like, and kind of cassettes. Yeah. There was a lot of... That was 2000. Yeah. 2000 was 20 years ago. We were just getting over the back that ass up hype. We were just getting over the no limit hype. You know what I mean? We were getting into like Nelly and Ja Rule and shit like that. That's true. Look at how long ago that Ja Rule's like completely done now. You know? He's yeah. fucking, fucking people over at the Hot <clears throat> Festival. But that's what I'm saying <laughs> is, is like, do you, do you think it's going to continue on like, like right now we got iTunes, Spotify, fucking whatever else there is out there whereas back then it was like transitioning from cassettes to cds and then it was like uh you had your mp3 kind of uploads to your ipods and shit and now we're in like a streaming kind of stage you think that's where it's gonna stay i think it'll stay digital Digital can be real. It would turn to like a robotic, kind of like a, how Alexa is and shit. Like you can literally just yell and there, there's a song pops out. Okay. Just that's it. That's how something. Like you're just gonna play. talk in the thin air and it's, it's like, gonna play a song right <laughs> in your ears. Well, obviously it's chipping you and you're gonna like your phone's gonna pop up in your eye. Or, well, not obviously I mean, like that, but like Alexa, like you just that simple. No, no, that's, I get it. that simple. I don't know what they use. That obviously the streaming device <laughs> Alexa, but. you think that but at the same time you think we'd have like flying cars and shit by now but I mean technically you know, a plane like, is a flying car yeah. I mean it's got wheels yeah. it goes super fast it flies in the but air how long have we had a plane mm, not by a hundred years oh, so 1912 yeah it's probably about first years. I don't know and uh, what about the music itself mm-hmm. like I feel like we went from back in the day it was real like Gangsterish, like actual gangsterish with mm. Ice Cube, Tupac, trying to make a revolution as far as like black communities and shit like that. <clears throat> and then you got into more of like it's not so much gangster, but it's all about like drugs. Mm. Like it's cool to do LSD <clears throat> and it's cool to fucking smoke weed. Yeah, a lot of downers. Yeah, like yeah. it's all this shit. Do you think we'll ever get past that, or do you think that's way? Rap and hip hop is, or the, I think the only way we will get past that is for something fucking crazy and sad to happen, bro. And it's yeah. already it already is happening. Yeah, somebody major like say not to fucking put voodoo over Drake, <clears throat> but like what if Drake just overdosed? Yeah. I mean, it's like Janet Jackson. It's like some crazy or fucking like, shit. Or not Janet Jackson. It was uh, Whitney Houston. Yeah, she died uh, with cocaine. And- in her system and then yeah the bathtub and really shit really talks about cocaine no more. <laughs> but that's what it's I mean is bathroom. maybe you're right is it, it's gonna take something extreme but yeah. I think it would be more if someone spoke up rather than died of mm. like <clears throat> it's almost like um, like when Magic Johnson came out and said he had AIDS Mm-hmm. Like AIDS were known of, but no one really spoke of it. Has AIDS? You don't yeah. Have AIDS, you well, have whatever. AIDS. Whatever. <laughs> and then it, it and then it was like it was like like the gay community. Yeah. It was like people were gay, but they didn't speak about it. Then someone spoke about it. Yeah. And now I feel like if people were to say, "Hey, drugs aren't good for you," Trippy just like, came out and said, "All oh, all rappers, we should just smoke weed, fucking fuck the pill pop." And he said that yeah. last night. See, if that really changes that dude, then that's fucking good. 
You know, like, because that dude's one of the poster people for doing all that shit. Because it's, it's got to take a voice and then a trickle effect of more people engaging in that, like, yeah. say no to drugs. Mm. It doesn't make you cool. It doesn't enhance anything <clears throat> performance-wise or anything. It's like... Like today, bro, I was just out there by Walmart, and I seen some chick out there, like, going on a fucking wild, talking herself, but, like, throwing herself around. I'm like, what the hell makes these people even want to try that shit when they see these people at Walmart walking around like this? Yeah, you're going to yeah. be at Walmart looking like that. Uh, <laughs> you be the one on Snapchat, you know? <laughs> 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 Uh, I, don't, I don't see why you even want to, you know, like, that's insane, man. And I'm just trying to like, what the fuck? No, I, I 100% agree. I don't know whatever influences anybody to go down that road. Like, that first day saying, that's a good idea. Somebody made it cool. And then, and then was... after, but then even then, that first time, it's like, oh, that's a good idea. Then And then what, like, it just becomes a habit? No, I think you got to continually to do it. And every it time like, you're saying it's okay. When I was growing up, it was weed. Everybody just wanted to do weed. And then, like, now everybody's growing up. Because obviously it was Cleveland that we're speaking about weed. So everybody's like, oh, let's smoke fucking weed. Let's see what Kush is all about. And then mm-hmm. now it's fucking, it's due to fucking, oh, I'm popping Zannies, fucking Percocets. It's like, hey, well, let's see what the fuck a Percocet feels like. It's like. No, no I just, <laughs> just. I don't know, man. Cool. It's kind of, like, it's sad. I don't even like taking like, pain pills, bro. Cause... Because again, I guess my biggest take on it all is. These rappers with today's society and social media and easy to stream shit and kids having access to it, you are influencing kids. Yeah. Exactly. Like, and if you, like, I know people don't care. They go watch our podcast and like, oh, they're fucking super. What do they know about kids? They don't have any kids. Yeah, that might be true. But at the end of the day, I also know not to like promote using drugs. Yeah. Like without. I ain't on him like. Hey kids, I'm pouring a beer. Yeah, like that's I'll just show beer when I have it as a kid, right? Here. It's like you don't even know what's in it. Get orange juice. You know? Well, now they know. Now they don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't put orange juice in that bitch. <laughs> Carbonated orange juice. Now, yeah. motherfucker. No, no, it's just <laughs> like, come on. I don't know. I just wish people with bigger platforms would utilize it a little bit better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, I, I don't know. Like I've not been on that big platform, like so LeBron. how do I know what I would do? I guess you're right, because we're, kind of, we're not popular, but we're kind of in like, the local sense. You say whatever the fuck you want. Kind of in the sense. I like, do censor myself, though. Like I'm like you, like I said, I don't sit here and condone drug use. Because we have talked about stories where, like, oh, I was driving, I was kind of intoxicated. We always say, don't drive drunk. And That's like, true. Like, I mean, we do. We true. I mean, if you're going to drive, I mean, and drink. You call this guy. Don't call me because I'm probably drunk. <laughs> if you drive drunk, I'm going to pick your car up. You're going to pay me all kinds of fucking cash, so don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, Just do don't it. fucking do it. <laughs> so, do you have kids? I have a little girl, bro. How old is she? She's eight. Eight years old. So we're going to end on two questions. Two First ones. one is most popular. Fan favorite. Fan favorite. You're. I mean, you're probably going to be popular all on your own. You're, this has nothing to do with us. Ten years from now, she'll be 18. She's going to see Daddy on the Beard Bros podcast. You're going to be popping. You'll probably be a returning guest at that time. (laughs) And (laughs) they're going to watch this episode on YouTube. Give your daughter one message, whatever advice, anything you'd like her to take on for the rest of her life, man. Enjoy life as it comes. And, uh... School is always important because early on in my high school years, I did not pay attention and do my work, and it was such a hard damn time making it happen. But I graduated on time, but I don't want you to go through the struggle I've been through. I want you to be the best you can be, and I always want you to live a better life than I did. So always take life as it comes. Don't take anything else too seriously. Always concentrate on your future. <clears throat> and love everybody that deserves to be loved and don't listen to any noise you hear from the outside world just listen to everybody that's important and that's it yep that includes your daddy yes ma'am <laughs> good advice brother good advice second question 2020 mm-hmm. it's a brand new decade mm-hmm. this is something we're going to be asking people that are coming on right now 
what is something in this new decade, not even just the first year re uh, resolutions or whatever, what is your decade plan that maybe you didn't do in this previous decade or decades prior? Mm -hmm. What's something you want to do, man? Oh, bro, I want to buy houses. I want to have more more kids. I want to go on more vacations, go to more Niner games. But I want to Niners win all 10 Super Bowls. So. I can't even hate that. They're more attractive than Cowboys. I had to. No, bro, but. But I want to grow. I want to grow, bro. Like, like I'm enjoying life as it comes now, bro. Like, like I said, I, I got my wife. Honestly, I feel like, you know, my future wife, and I want to have kids. I want to buy more houses, buy more vehicles, whatever. Just enjoy life with my family. You know, I want to learn how to cook more shit. I want to do anything I possibly can to grow as a person, bro. You know what I mean? Anything. Yeah. Make more music. Everything, bro. <clears throat> That's a plan. Learn how to speak Spanish, Spanish bro. I know how to speak Spanish, everything, bro. Like, there you go. Well, you got 10 years. Yeah, bro. Start Spread it all out in 10 years, yeah. and I'm sure all that shit will be doable. Let's make that a goal in 10 years. Let's learn how to speak Spanish. Fuck yeah, I'm in. Let's make it happen. I'm in. I can speak Spanish. Spanish. I'm no, you good. fucking oh, can. Nah, I just want to think about it. I was like, damn, man. Nah, nah, we don't know Spanish. So I'm going to come over tomorrow for lessons. Yeah. Just gotta... Hey, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I, I don't know what you can to cook. I think bro. Rosetta Stone is fucking still it. out. No, <laughs> shit. YouTube, I ain't never made a red letter song on my YouTube channel. Like, uh, how much time? Nah. <laughs> We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. There's got to be something to teach you fucking Spanish. Yeah. There's no way. I got an audio book, something. Something. All right. Tell us. Album name, day of dropping. How can they purchase it? I haven't even announced the album dropping yet. Well, so I'm this is exclusive. Hey. <sighs> Lord have mercy. My third album is dropping December 20th. Everywhere, available everywhere worldwide. iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Play, Deezer, everywhere you can think of, MySpace. And I'm just playing. And <laughs> everywhere you can think of. All right. You can think of. And y'all better it too. Everything. There you support, go. Always support local because, you know, we're all trying to make, make our dreams happen just like this podcast, you know? And they spend money and they work their ass off to make it happen. You know, we're all doing this for y'all. Okay. And so always support local. Even if you don't want to buy it, just go listen to it on Spotify or something. That's that that's that's cool to me, you know? There you just go. Check it out. Even if you don't like it, that's cool. Just check it out once. That's that's cool to me, you know? You might as well buy it, because you be buying your kids on Fortnite skins, you better buy a fucking album. <laughs> 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 right? There you go. Go support the man. Yeah. Go support him. How many songs has it got? Thirteen songs. There you go. Songs. I know you you listen to thirteen songs in one day. Yeah. So okay. go buy the album. We appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you Thank you so much for today. Absolutely. You guys know the routine. Like, subscribe, share with whoever. Please. Thank you. You guys have a blessed day. Till next time, Beard Bros out. Peace.